finally cooled down. It's like 50. I have to get used to 50 now. But anyway, this is just going on the last two videos. I can't tell you enough the importance of. Uh, Okay, we're, we're talking about the T-top, as an example. I took it apart, I laid all the parts out, but now I, I got they're all over my table, and I don't want them here. So you're gonna put them somewhere. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you, meaning me. But if you take apart a whole car, for instance, you're gonna forget where everything, what everything is and what everything does. So, I, I took a picture this morning on my computer, and it's going to be on this video, I think. Take your parts, you know, put them together as much as you can. Like, I got this, they're not all cleaned up yet, but I don't care. I'm just going to take all the parts that I took off of here, screws, and I already got pictures. I'm just going to stick them in a baggie. This piece even interests me because, I mean, even these dumb little parts you think you don't know, you don't need, but this shows me how they. Put the uh, the visor over the uh, the headliner. So I'm, I'm just going to save that little piece. I'm, again, I might never need it, but I'm going to save it. And then I'm just going to write in the back. Uh, T top. Removal parts. See, if I wanted to, again, this is my technique, but if I wanted to, I could even write the video number. Go see this video, because if I make 50 more videos, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna remember what the video. But now I got all the parts here. And I can I can I can disorganize them all. Just using it this as an example. I don't, I don't usually show all of this. I don't think I need this, okay, but what the heck, I'll just save it for now. You, you never know. Work together, and I just you gotta put them somewhere. Now, this is the problem with taking taking a car apart. I'll find a, a place for them. That's where I I built the second floor. I showed it way back, just to put this kind of stuff. So when the time comes, even if I don't need it, it's a reference that I can use. I don't even know if you can see this in the video. That's what I don't like about shooting videos. Yeah, you can. I can come back 10 years later with my video and my pictures and my parts and I could put this together. It wouldn't be, the problem is people, like when I bought this car, it didn't come with pictures. It didn't come with I didn't know what the parts were. There, it was a truckload of parts. That's the main struggle in doing this: is where does each part go? Or worse, what is missing? For instance, if I went over to the T-top, let's say that I hadn't got all those parts. I just want to. I'm just making an example out of this video. Let's say the T-top had came just like this with all the parts off of it. Which a lot of the car did. Then I'd have to take the time to figure out where to get the parts, what they look like, where they attach, what's the right bolts. 
So this is why I did, did not pull these parts off until right now. I mean, this top has probably been on here, I don't know, a year? I can't remember now. But it doesn't matter, I'm all documented, I'm safe. I got pictures, I got video. I can't, I cannot stress enough how important this is. Because I don't have to remember. I might, th you know, when I was younger, you know, I'm 66 now, but when I was younger, I took things apart. They didn't have digital cameras. And then I, I would say, how does this go back together? It's pretty easy when you got a running car and you fix it and you put it together that day. But if you got a car that you're, gonna, you're not, you might not touch for a week, a month, a year. Like graveyard cars, I don't know if anybody watches graveyard cars. They, they say some of these cars take three, four years. They're trying to find the parts. Anyway, so now I'm just going to, uh, again, I saved this piece. I think I'll stick this in the back, too. Got, I got a picture of that sitting there. Uh, so I'm just going to clean this up. I'm not going to make a video of that. I'm just going <coughs> to, if, if anybody's thinking, how do you clean it? I don't know. I'm just going to try scraping it. Wire brushing it. Maybe I'll try some heat. I don't know. That, but that's that's how you solve this stuff. You just you just try. I think I gotta weld this piece here I was showing in the last video. I'm looking at the plate on the inside. I think I, I, did, I took some screws out of this plate. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to clean it up. Then I want to put the weather stripping on, but I have to, again, this is, and I have a box over there that I got it online. But my problem is once I put it on, It's, it's, it's going to stay on, and it's going to come down to here. So, this is going to have to be primed or painted or something. I'm not ready to do the whole car yet. But I do want to do this area somehow. And then I'll just uh, tape it off when the time comes. And anyway, so that's how I do it. When I start putting it back together, I will... Uh, I'll... I'll dig into this, I'll dig into that bag, because that's the parts I need. I'll clean them up. I'll decide if I want to get new parts. Do I want to buy new parts? No, but if I just decide I want to, at least I have one to, now I have a part that I can look at and see what it looks like and know if it's the right part. Because a lot of times, you you try to find a part. Like here's another screw. You'll try to find a part, and they might show you the wrong part, and you're thinking, okay, I finally found the part, and you, they send it to you. It takes a week, two weeks, whatever. And let's say you buy it ahead of time, you put it aside, and it comes time to use it, and it's the wrong part. That's happened to me. These, anybody that's doing this, this is valuable information. I mean, I wish I could put it in a book, but it would take, it'd take volumes. And again, once this car gets together, I'll never do another one. This, I'm just doing this for something, something to do. So anyway, I don't know how I can hash that over anymore. You know, one thing that, again, you have to think ahead, but one thing I'm thinking is, I put a lot of different kinds of paints on here. I'm, I've never painted a car in my life. So I'm going to have to somehow make sure that whatever I spray, either I sand this back off, 
or whatever I put on it doesn't react to the Bondo or to this primer or to this uh, rust removal stuff. And I think the best way to do that for me is I saved this old uh, door skin. I think I took some door parts out of the door and I saved the skin. The reason I saved it, well, one, it gives me some sheet metal for patching if I need it. But I can also test paint on here. I mean, I can spray that primer or that rust removal stuff before I paint the car and spray it in a little areas and see if there's any reaction. Because I don't know. I don't know. So let's just, now let's go a little bit further on this video. So I did buy some parts ahead of time, okay? In here are the, what I think, again, I don't know, but this is all the T-top plastics. It says six pieces I wrote on the box so I can remember. Then I got the T-top Y that I was showing in the video. Then I got the T-top gaskets and door gaskets and a hood gasket that goes on the cowl. And then a question mark, I don't know what that means. So anyway, this, this is how I do it. So let's just open one box. Yeah, I've never seen these parts. I've never put these parts on a car. I'm gonna go over here and let's see if they match. And if they don't match, well, I don't know what, what, what to do about it. So I'll tell you what I know about these parts. It actually says 70, and remember this is a 79 T-top, it says 78 to 81 Camaro pillar post trim moldings interior T-top Y style. So. I think I said in the last video, that sometimes you gotta look for Camaro parts. So I got these two parts. Okay, this is stamped. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you what I go through. This is this has got a R for right. If I look at these reproductions, it does say right hand on here, so this should match. So looking at this. appears to be right. So I'm lucky. The hole's right. This thing was just in tatters and it gets brittle. Well, this isn't too bad. Anyway, that's how I do it. I don't always show this stuff. So now, again, I don't want to lose track of these parts. So I'm just going to stick them back in a box.
until I need them. But the thing is, I'm probably not going to need. I'm probably not, <coughs> not going to need these parts until I put the whole interior together. But right now, man, it's hard to get these parts even. And in this this pandemic, as they're calling it, well, it, it said it was made in Taiwan. They're not even letting ships come into our harbors. I don't think. So anyway, I gotta. So I don't know. I'm just gonna add this in, just, just so I, you know that I do what I say. You gotta find a place right now. Right now, before you go on to anything else, find a place like I'm gonna do right now. Put this stuff aside. Okay, this is about the t top. Again, I just wanted to show you this is what I do. You take the picture and then you put it on your computer. So let's say this picture. Let's go one more picture. So then I can just go to uh, plus. Go back down to normal size. So this way I have a record of everything. I can put it together 10 years later. There's that screw I was talking about that I took out from underneath. And then if you want, let's say I wanted to print the picture to take down to the shop. I just go to print to the printer up here and I could take that down to the shop. But now I have this, these pictures forever. Some of these things I wasn't able to show you on the uh, video, but I just wanted to share. This is what I think everybody should do. So you see that that clip right there? You couldn't see that in the video, but I'll zoom in on it. That's what it looks like. Now I'll go up to one more picture. After the weather strippings are removed, let's see. I was talking about there's a corner piece here and this, so I can zoom in. That's what it looks like. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. So there's the clip, there's the T top latch, and this corner piece where the weather stripping goes underneath. And here's some residue of. But I got to clean up of the uh, adhesive. I got this side clean. Took about twenty minutes. Wire brush.
Anyway, that's how I'm doing it. It's working good. But the heat gun worked real good because I got most of the stuff out on the last video. So here's a close-up of these clips now that uh, it's clean. Wax and grease remover. I did it over everything, the whole top, because I got WD 40 on it. I just kept cleaning it until everything was gone. Until nothing came up. Now I don't want the rust. Doesn't matter if it runs or anything. It's really kind of cold for any kind of pain.
put on a coat on here. Warm it up to about 80 degrees. I don't have any clean fingers. Good. Yeah, I went up into my pile. And there's four pieces. I gotta clean these up here tomorrow. Left, both sides of the car. Both sides of the car. And they're going to go like uh, Flange on. I guess I can tell by the screw holes. So anyway, one goes here. And one goes on the outside. I'm not sure which is which right now. This has got a lip to catch the weather stripping. 